Hello, hi, Rock is here. Uh, recently, uh, I have some partners talking to me, uh, talking about tender spec. And actually, this spec is influenced by the other competitors. And they bring this spec to me, say, Rock is, what can I do? Actually, uh, this spec is a little bit weird. And the spec, uh, actually, in order to put another product from my company to meet okay, this competitive spec, right? I need to use a high end model. That means, okay, our cost will be higher. Okay, if the product is not apple to apple comparison, right? Some other product they put a high spec, and we need to use another higher, higher spec, okay, to match the, the competition, right? So our price will be high and meaning chance will be low. So when the partner come and talk to me, say, don't worry, uh, show me the spec and see what we can do. So, and then I spend some time to explain to my partner, say, okay, what is the meaning behind? And we should lobby the customer and let them understand. Otherwise we cannot win. So this is the sharing uh, with my partner. So I find this uh, knowledge is quite uh, useful. So that's why I would like to spend a few minutes here today and to share with you what is the network switch, uh, switching capacity and forwarding capacity. So as a switch, a network switch, these two parameter is very fundamental and simple. Talking about switching capacity, normally the switching unit, uh, the capa uh, switching capacity unit is talking about gigabit per second or a terabit per second because the switch become more and more powerful. So we are touching, talking about like a terabit per second or even like a high speed. So an other parameter, we are talking about forwarding capacity. Forwarding capacity means how many packet we can forward. So normally these two parameters are interrelated to each other. Why? Because a switch in terms of the number of bits per second, everybody knows bit already, right? Either zero or one. Forwarding capacity, talking about packet, right? Packet is talking about the packet size. In the internet world, the packet size may vary. Talking about small packet to large packet. In general, right, uh, more in the internet world, right now the internet packet becomes bigger and bigger. Why? Because uh, it will save uh, more space, uh, more like a header cost, okay, in terms of the transportation. So uh, in general, right, the large packet size, it may reach talking about 1,500 bytes per packet. After you know these two parameters, right, uh, these two key parameters, this contribute the performance of the switch. And this parameter is very important and fundamental, okay, used, okay, in most of the tender spec. And here I give you a very simple calculation to understand, okay, the relationship between the switching capacity and the forwarding capacity. So in the internet, in Google, right, you can search easily, say, in terms of the packet size, normally under IPv4 or IPv6, what is the packet size? And you see, okay, from the slide talking about from 500 something bytes and up to 1,500 bytes. And one byte equals to eight bit. So if there's a switch talking about, it can support one million packet per second. It means it can support one million packet one packet, which is 576 bytes, and each byte equals to eight bits, and then I can convert from million packet per second to megabit per second unit based on this formula, and assume the packet size is 576, which is in general, right? Not a big packet size. Comparatively, okay, in general, um, small to medium size, okay, packet, okay, for the calculations. So I got the formula, formula say 1 million packet per second equals to around 4 gigabit per second switching capacity. So let me, okay, go to the specifications. And this one, okay, is one of our friendly competitor spec, right? They claim about, say, oh, 20 gigabit switching capacity. And then 30 million packet per second. In our company product, we just have 20 gigabit Per second, but our forwarding capacity is only 15. What does it mean? 
What does it mean by 30 million packets per second? From the formula I have previously, right? 30 million packets per second means 122 gigabit per second switching capacity is required. And right now the switch is only 20 gigabit per second. How can it support? Okay, what is the meaning behind? It doesn't make sense at all, of course, because uh, in most of the switch, the overall performance will be limited by the physical port capacity. Imagine a switch, a switch talking about, I got 10 one gig port, right? That is 10 gigabit per second. Full duplex is 20 gigabit per second. And 20 gigabit per second, talking about the packet size is 576. How many packet you can transport? And then you can work back the formula. So actually 30 million packet per second is very, you know, an ideal number. And then you can claim, but you cannot prove. Okay, so this is the question. So looking into the spec of uh, our company product, right? We got a similar switch, same 10 port. The switching capacity is the same, but our product is more practical, right? We just claim only one five, 15 million packet per second. It's around 61 gigabit per second already. Actually the switching capacity, I mean the port switching capacity cannot meet the match, the requirement, but you can see, we have what we call the box switching capacity, which is the back plane. Actually, our switch with the black plane, that can support, okay, much higher capacity. But of course, it will be limited by the port switching capacity. So these technical issues need to explain to the customer clearly, say, don't just pursue a very high forwarding capacity number in the data sheet. It has no meaning at all. We need, okay, to understand the uh, meaning behind, okay, the parameter and then select the right product. So that means, okay, when we look into the uh, port switching capacity and also the box switching capacity at backend, right, we need to be very careful and understand, okay, how many devices can connect and then what is the performance that you will achieve. Just pursue the number is not practical at all. So I hope this simple section can let you understand more about like the switching capacity and the forwarding capacity relationship. And finally, just deliver one simple message. We have to understand the spec and then we can win the deal, no headache. So don't worry about say, oh, this spec I cannot comply, right? No worry. We just need to look into the detail and understand and we can win the deal easily. Thank you.